Here with Aaron Davis, uh, also known by Kumabis. Kumabis, yes. Uh, so right now we're trying, uh, well, MetaMask lets you hold your own keys for Ethereum. Uh, we're trying to decentralize our infrastructure. Right now you do all your reads about the blockchain state from centralized infrastructure, uh, but we want it to be a proper light client. Now that's non-trivial because we can't access the main network. We don't have the TCP UDP we need in the browser to do that. So we have to do this much larger engineering project which involves creating a second network of light clients. And that it also led us to realize that uh, there's gonna be orders of magnitude more light clients than full nodes. And so we need to really redesign how light clients work and how they share data and how they find each other so they can share the data they have, mm -hmm. yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. So here we've got a little data visualization of a, uh, of a test net uh, yep. in real world networking conditions. Yes. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, right now it starts as a little hairball, which is maybe not that interesting, <laughs> but that's good. That means lots of connectivity. You can see there's one part where the connectivity is not great. Uh, but and those are mm -hmm. the black balls, the uh, black right, spheres? Right here. Oh, you right. See, so you see detached nodes yeah. right, from the graph. Yeah, so, right. so we have RTC. I mean, just in any networking case, sometimes you're not going to be able to reach nodes. And I don't know why these ones are unreachable. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, you have really good connectivity here. And then you have some not great connectivity here and then no connectivity on these. Right, so what's interesting is that these nodes are actually reporting to you on your telemetry server, and they're reporting that they have zero connections, right? That's to right. To the rest of the swarm. Yes. All right, got it. Um, and so our telemetry server is you know, running in a cloud and much easier to right. access than maybe these other peers, yeah. which are running on people's laptops. Cool. Um, so what I'm especially interested in right now is, is the DHT and some performance characteristics of the DHT, especially running on top of WebRTC and running in the browser. Mm -hmm. um, so I have some other views here. Uh, we can look at it in, uh, based on their like XOR position, their ID. Yep. Let's have a look at that. Uh, so, so this is putting them in a circle. Here yep. the lines are showing, again, their, their connectivity. Mm -hmm. um, so we can also look at uh, something like their DHT routing table. Yeah. Which is going to look very similar because uh, they're connected to the peers in the routing table. Right. Um, so this is showing us the shape of the network according to like basically the Kademlia distance, essentially the Kademlia key space. And these are this this these lines are actually showing us the membership, right, in routing tables. So what peers hold other peers in their routing tables. That's right. Nice. Um, and the colors right now are yeah. set to the platforms. The green ones are running on Chromium. Right. Uh, orange ones are on Firefox. Uh, I did see a Yamex browser in there earlier. Yandex. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Yandex. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yandex. All right. that, that was sort of a rare <laughs> mythical creature. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> Oh, so now we can also uh, visualize a DHT query. So earlier I did a find providers query, so it walks yeah. through the network and tries to find people that have provide content. Yeah. So actually, actually, I'm seeing this like little these tabs at the top. Are you able to change colors based on like different characteristics? Is that implemented yet? Yeah. So this is something I, I built in the process of doing this data visualization. It's a it's a like a modular uh, graph visualizer, so you can add different modules that affect how you do the layout, mm -hmm. how you do the topology, and how you do the color. Right. Um, so right now we're looking at platform. Nice. Uh, we can, can we switch to like mm -hmm. uptime? Is it yeah. possible? Or let's see. Yeah. So right. so in this experiment, I have a max uptime of two hours, and I just have the node restart. Right. Um, and so you see the ones that are redder have been up to closer to two hours, and the okay. bright green ones are, are younger. So this is actually showing us that the DHT, in a way, is like it's showing us churn, right? And the DHT, the one, the nodes that have stayed, that are greener, are have been on the DHT for less time, which means that they might not, they, they might not be so stable. They might not be providing that stability to the DHT that is, you know, a desirable property in a DHT. That's right. So yeah. Uh, and so then th the next thing that I'd really like to show off is, is the uh, DHT query. Uh, yeah. I already did one earlier, so I'll, I'll just display that now. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, so now I changed the, uh, the topology and the color to be based on the DHT query that I did earlier. And, so uh, what, what do the colors mean now? Yeah. So over here, it's hard to see is the pink one. This right. is the initiator of the request. Got it. Um, all the other, the yellow nodes, all the... Let's get closer. <laughs> yeah. All the yellow nodes are nodes that were recommended at some point, but we didn't bother dialing them. The uh, right. orange ones are ones that recommended, that were recommended to us. We did dial. Um, and then the green ones were results. 
Um, nice. And, and the blue ones, we have no interaction. That's very cool. That's super cool. All right, so what do we see here? So can you, are you able to see the amount of hops that this query took? Yes, uh, so, so anything, all, all requests initiate from the pink one, and right. all network requests, actual network requests did come from the pink one, yep. but uh, here when you see it bounce, that's because uh, the pink one went here, dialed this one, this one said, hey, you should talk to that guy, and we went over there. Nice, nice. So from this, this app, you're actually able to instruct this particular node to launch a query to the network. Yes, that's right, and we can right. also, um, Run them in batch so we can nice. uh, get more wider statistics on. It's definitely a great, a great platform, a great you know experiment to actually run uh, experiments on the network itself, right? So as you are able to visualize the network and uh, you are able to instruct particular peers to run a particular operation, uh, that and you're able to like inspect how that operation actually unraveled in the network. That is pretty awesome visualization because you know peer-to-peer -peer networking is very hard. Uh, to understand, so having visuals like this make the whole thing a lot more approachable. And uh, you, you can uh, you can run this locally, like you can spin up a bunch of nodes and run it locally. And your yep. DHT is perfect, and it always resolves. And then when you run it in, in on these production nodes, it's very different. It's wobbly; things don't connect, yeah. and so it's yeah. really important to see how it behaves under. Right, right, right. So what actually I'm wondering, like for MetaMask itself and for the projects. You know, because you said that uh, you are building the, these visuals and this technology to actually uh, gain insight into how the foundation uh, is works of the networking. So, how why did you actually pick Lippy to be itself as a networking stack to build upon? Yeah. So, one of the, one of the primary reasons is uh, it was a uh, transport agnostic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, you totally know, need this for the browser, right? Yeah, and and so the way that the Ethereum network was selected, they yeah. they hard coded things to the protocols, and those protocols weren't available to us, and so we got into this. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so that made our TCP life ADB. much much harder. Of course. Yeah. Um, and then being able to just uh, you know take the same code that can run in TCP UDP land and then be able to run it in the browser context uh, was very very powerful. Of course, with transport transparency. Uh, you're able to use WebRTC with the same business logic, uh, such that it can seamlessly switch to TCP UDP in the future if you know browsers would implement it. Which there are some efforts uh, to go in that direction. Like for example, the DWeb. Yes. Yeah. So have you been working with them, or what, have what you I, into that? Uh, I haven't been running it yet because I don't expect to have it available. But what I'm looking right. forward to doing is getting uh, good statistics from here running on WebRTC. And then run it on LibDWeb, and then show an order of magnitude of performance yeah. improvements, and yeah. use that to help uh, make my case that LibDWeb is really important for the yeah. web. Totally. Uh, cool. And we're in a browser extension, so it's it's sort of a privileged context. So yep. even exposing there makes makes sense, e even if you wouldn't for the yeah. normal browser. Totally, totally. So Kumabis, I think this de demo was amazing. This kind of tooling is exactly what we need for to be able to understand what's going on in peer-to-peer -peer networks. Uh, we particularly, I'm from the libby 2 b team, and we have to evolve a lot uh, to get to a place like this. We're probably going to continue working with Kumabis uh, to like uh, get some of his learnings and get kind of uh, some of his insights into how to build these tools. Uh, so that we can make them available to the entire libby 2 b ecosystem. Uh, and I just wanted to say, do you have anything else that you want to tell the world? <laughs> the uh, the world? Yeah, we're hiring. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. The MetaMask team to yeah, continue yeah, building on these tools? Yeah, yeah. So you, nice. know, you want to work remote, work on peer-to-peer uh, -peer stuff in the browser. Sweet. Uh, come push, push everything forward. Uh, please join us. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks a lot, man. Take care. See ya.